Computer architecture is hard. Or is it? Hello, future world changers. I'm CT5K. Today, we are diving in into what computer architecture is and how you can use it to your advantage. When you think of architecture, you probably think of buildings built by the ancient Greeks or Romans. Or maybe I'm the only weirdo who thinks that. Either way, a common inflammation of the word architecture is in buildings. Your kitchen goes here, bedroom goes here, and your house has a roof instead of being a box. The same thing goes for computer architecture. If you look it up, the definition is a set of rules and methods that describe the functionality, organization, and implementation of computer systems. Not using fancy words, computer architecture is how your components are placed and how they work together. So computer architecture can be as simple or complex as we make it. The architecture in the RPC series is relatively simple, while the architecture in Nubasaurus's Skittle Bits would be decently complex. So how do we go about making a computer architecture? Well, what I would recommend is that you first build a very rough draft of what you want your computer to look like. Because although your components are fairly space restrained, the location of them in a so-called motherboard is not. So your ALU could be on the left side of the board, or it could be on the right side. Now, it might make more sense to place it on, the, on one side or the other, but in most cases, it's really up to the developer. For your rough draft, I would recommend that you build a one block tall color-coded schematic. This could be using any colored blocks, but in this instance, I'm just using wool because it's easiest for me. The reason for this is because it's a lot easier to visualize wool blocks than it is entire computer systems. Now, your final build might be slightly different from this schematic, but all in all, this schematic is what you want your computer to look like once it is finished. For your colors, that is completely dependent on you. For me, I use blue for the ALU, green for memory, and red for busing, aka wiring. If you want to go a step further, then I would place repeaters on top of the schematic showing where data is flowing to and from. What I have here is a schematic for the RPC-1 and a schematic I made for a hex computer by Tyrannical Basket. For those of you who don't know, Tyrannical was the second person to post a hex computer on YouTube. At first glance, his computer looked smaller than the RPC-1, but just recently I found out that I had miscalculated the height, making the RPC-1 smaller, so this computer never had the smallest res of computer. Nonetheless, it still uses an interesting architecture, which is why it's in this video. So if you look at Tyrannical's architecture, we can see that the input is right here, and then it feeds into this memory unit. Then this memory unit feeds into this memory unit, which feeds into this memory unit. Then these two left units feed into the ALU. The output runs along this busing wire to this unit right here. This is a lot easier to wrap one's head around than this mess right here. For the RPC-1 schematic, the architecture is a little bit different, although despite coming from different creators, they are very similar in many ways. The input is still in the same general area. This one is right here, whereas in Tyrannicals, it's right there along that corner. However, the main difference between this schematic and this schematic is where this input line connects to. So in Tyrannicals, it basically acts like a shift register, whereas in the RPC-1, the input line right here can go to either this unit right here or this unit right here. Then the input modules feed into the ALU right here, which goes into this last output register, which wraps around and they can be used to fed these two again. So you might be looking at this and thinking to yourself, well, this architecture schematic is smaller, therefore it's better. And while yes, it does look smaller and simpler from an engineer's standpoint, to a programmer, the RPC architecture might be better because each memory unit can be controlled without any interference from the other units. So for example, if I wanted to set that register right there with this schematic, I could just plug this in and set this. Whereas with this schematic, I would have to set this then set this, then set this, and then feed in these values. If this is supposed to represent a Resto computer, then where is the decoder? When building a schematic, I wouldn't recommend that you place your decoder since of all the components, it's the easiest to move around. And as you build your decoder, you may decide to change its location mid-build. So for the RPC-1, I built my decoder right here, which is represented by the yellow wool. Fairly straightforward, but it's not the only way to build a decoder. Tyrannical, with his design, just decided to put his decoder on top of the entire unit like so. Just a heads up, these are exaggerations in size. 
bouncing off what I said earlier, if he had said decided to put his decoder instead of up here and put it right here, then there might be a lot of interference with the core of his computer in which he would either have to change how his computer was positioned or how it worked. Either one of those options would have been frustrating. So how would you go about building your own schematic? Well, first, I'd build the ALU, as in my opinion, it's the most important part of the computer. So it does not have to be the exact size of your ALU, but it should make at least a general rough shape of what you want your ALU to look like. Then I would build the busing connecting the ALU to the output registers. So, for example, if we're going to have two output registers, then we might build something like this and make it a shift register like Tyrannical did in his design. Now we will build the input registers. Typically, you don't use more registers as the accumulator than the number of inputs in the ALU. So if our ALU compares two numbers, then we will have two memory units, like so. Now we will create an input line connecting these two units to an input. So this is our input right here. And then we will create one final bus connecting this memory unit to the two input units so that way we can do complex calculations. And boom, we have ourselves a core. Now if we want, we can go along and place repeaters on where the data is going. So for instance, since this is the input line, the repeaters will be facing this way, and then these will face into this ALU. Now this ALU will face into this output register, which faces into this output register, which goes into the main loop again. Now that this is done, it's time for the most exciting part, building the computer itself. If you have enjoyed this video, then do make sure to give this video a like and subscribe. We are on the road to 1 million subscribers and have about 1 million subscribers left to go. If you want more tips on how to build a redstone computer, then I recommend that you check out this video. Anyways, that's it for today. I'm CT5K. Now let's go change the world.